Important Tesla tip time. This is a very important thing that took me a long time to figure out. Press back four times, initiates Rainbow Road. Just passed it. There goes the top. The thing totally works. Welcome back to What's Inside Family. Today I'm gonna do an update that I haven't done for probably a couple of years. As you can see, we have lots of Teslas. We've had Teslas for five or six years now. We've made lots of YouTube videos about it. Well, today I am going on a road trip up to Salt Lake City, which is about a four and a half hour drive. I'm gonna drive this black Tesla Model S, which is the longest range Tesla they have, 405 miles. And I'm gonna show you today what some of the best tips are if you own a Tesla or if you're wanting to buy a Tesla so that when you go on road trips, you save lots of time because you travel like a pro. Because there are tricks to traveling properly with the Tesla. Today's video is sponsored by EcoFlow and we'll talk about them later. Some of these you guys will know, but a lot of them you won't. It is crazy windy out here. Okay, tip number one, place your items that are valuable inside of the front trunk. It makes it more difficult for people to break in and steal those items. Before we go, let's say bye to Lincoln. I think he's in the garage hitting golf balls with his friends. All right, here we are inside of the golf simulator room. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Are you doing Lincoln's homework for I'm him? I'm a math teacher. He's teaching me how to do math. <laughs> let me see, let me see this math. Look at this math. This is good stuff. All right, Boston, come show us one swing before I go. Working on his swing. Oh, well, let's see that. Ooh, in the fairway. Just barely, oh, it's rolling out. First fairway I've hit in like 30 days. Feels really good. <laughs> 113 mile an hour club head speed. Look at that club path, 0.1. Doesn't get much better than that. I'm doing a video on top Tesla tips for road trips. Off the top of your head, can you think of one? Autopilot. Autopilot, that's your tip. Yep. What about it? There's a secret feature in the Rainbow Road. You press it back four times, it initiates Rainbow Road, which is a great feature for road trips. Bye. All right, let's hit the road for real now. <laughs> oh, lost the camera. One, two, three, four. It pulls up uh, that. It will continue to do this for basically the whole drive until I take it out of autopilot. We are almost to the largest supercharger station inside of Utah. It used to be really small, and then uh, I did a Twitter video a while back showing that the owner was not happy that he was not getting paid by Tesla for the rent that they promised to give him and it kind of went viral on Reddit and on Twitter. All right, so this is out right here. There's a bag on it. This one's out also in Beaver, Utah. Bag in this one? And this guy is LB. He he's owns the owner the of the property. You own it all. So is Tesla telling you to put the bags on here? No, but they're not, they haven't paid me rent since since November of last year. Holy moly. They were supposed to be paying me rent for each charging station. They have paid me nothing. Nobody's charging on them until they start paying me what they owe me. Sounds like uh, Beaver, Utah could use some rent being paid. And now I don't know what deal they've worked out, but they got a massive influx of superchargers. Tip number three for a road trip, make sure you always have your destination to whatever supercharger that you are going to be stopping at next programmed into your GPS because the car is preconditioning the battery for fast charging. If you have a newer vehicle that's been out in the last couple of years, they do have the battery packs that are enabled for even faster supercharging up to 250 kilowatt hours where some of the old ones I think were only to like 150. But what they will do now is battery pack needs to get warm enough so that when you plug in, it can take a faster charge, a higher amount of kilowatt hours going inside of it so that you can charge at a higher rate. I have a lot of really useful tips coming up. Once we get to the supercharger, we're almost there. Here we go into the mighty Beaver Utah supercharger. What they say is the busiest supercharger in all of Utah. It is in between Northern Utah and Southern Utah, so it's a good middle ground for people to go. Even though all superchargers look the same, they are not the same. And that is a very important thing that could save you 20 or 30 minutes on your charge. There are version two superchargers and there are version three superchargers. Here in Beaver, it's pretty easy to tell the difference. Up on 
this, it says 150 kilowatts, which means this is a version two. It's one of the original chargers. This is a very important thing that took me a long time to figure out. This one right here is for B, and this one over here is for A. Don't ever plug in when somebody is already in the A or the B of that same number. You are sharing a charger with somebody else. The numbers aren't always right next to each other. A lot of times it'll go 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and then 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. It's confusing. Yeah, it's fun. Just ask me if I have fun doing this. Yeah, I have fun. <laughs> I would really like to fly the drone here but I don't think I have enough juice in my drone. So I need to charge my drone while I'm charging my car. I am not going to charge at the version two superchargers. I'm gonna come over here to the version threes because they charge so much faster. So even though this has number four A, B, C, and D, it really doesn't matter because version three superchargers don't share. See this car right here? They are rolling in where there's four different superchargers. But if you look closer, the cable is wrapped around the top of the supercharger. That is a sign that it is out of order. If you ever see that, that is the way that you know something's out of order. They're about to figure out it's out of order. This guy just left, he was super creeped out by me. Okay, tip number six is roll into the supercharger with as little of battery left as possible and that is safe for you on going there. The last like 30 to 45 minutes of charging your car is such a slow speed that it would be better just to hit the road so that when you arrive at the superchargers, you can be super low on battery and then it'll charge at the fastest rate possible. So like right now, because I wanted to stop at the supercharger, I didn't roll in with a very low battery. Even though that can charge up to 250 kilowatts, right now it is only charging it at 77 and it's gonna take 45 minutes to get to a full charge. If my battery was down here and I only had like three or 4% left, the charge would go up to 250 kilowatt hours, which is 1,000 miles an hour of charge. And you don't need to stay in charge until your car is completely full. Schedule your supercharging stops based off of where the superchargers are. That will save you a lot of time. The next Tesla road trip tip comes courtesy of today's sponsor, which is EcoFlow. I do like that the Tesla has USB charging outlets inside of the vehicle. There are a few in the back and there's a few in the front, but often when you are on road trips, there are a lot more charging needs that you have to have. EcoFlow is a leading energy company that has developed portable solutions so that when you are traveling, whether it's outdoors, indoors, you have a portable charging solution. And the latest one is the one that I've been using. It's the EcoFlow River Mini. Right now it is charging my laptop, my drone battery, my camera battery so that I have extra charge. Unfortunately, the battery inside of this camera goes out pretty quickly and so I always need to have a backup. And also my drone in high winds like this, the batteries don't last super long. And so I like to have a portable charging solution that just isn't available when you're on a Tesla road trip. What's awesome is last week I went on a trip with this, our hotel didn't have any outlets next to the bed. So I went out to the car and I got my EcoFlow River Mini and I brought it inside of the hotel and Leslie and I charged our phones and my cameras next to the bed and it didn't really matter that my hotel that wasn't the nicest hotel didn't have the charging options because I had this portable backup. Oh my gosh. Winter is coming, it is so cold. Even though the mini unit is on the smaller side of a portable battery, you still have the ability to charge 90% of consumer electronics. This is not for heavy duty appliances, but what's nice about that is that you have what you need from the consumer side of things for your phone, your laptop, a Wi-Fi router, whatever consumer electronic thing that you need to charge, the River Mini is capable of charging that. The River Mini supports AC input up to 240 watts and will recharge to 80% in one hour. And you can get a full recharge in 1.6 hours. And you can also take the port inside of your car to recharge the River Mini or solar panels if you have them. In the Type-C port, it provides 100 watt output, which is enough to charge my MacBook Pro. You can control the EcoFlow battery pack with the EcoFlow app. So yeah, you're getting a little insight into the way that I travel. I do take a portable battery pack. I always wanna make sure the laptop or my wife's iPad is charged for her to be able to watch shows on the drive so she doesn't get as bored. And the EcoFlow River Mini has been a great tool for me to do that. The newest member of the River family, the River Mini, is a great addition to your home when you need a smaller power source. Head to the link in the description to check it out. There is a Tesla Energy van that is fixing the superchargers that must be broken. Back on the road. Now it is raining on me and cold. I don't 
don't like winter and I can feel it coming. I do not like it. That's why we moved to a super warm place. I don't even know if I brought a jacket on this trip and I already need one. It feels so cold. It says it's only 60 degrees right now. Oh, you want another Tesla road trip tip? Get yourself a radar detector. I have this radar detector right here that is telling me that there is a cop up ahead of me. Oh, it just went away. Oh, nope, it's back. There's the light. Somewhere, there is a highway patrolman in front of me. This one is the Redline Pro, I think it is. The speed limit here is 80 miles an hour. So I'm setting the cruise control to 80 miles an hour. It was a little pricey, it was like $400. But I'm telling you, it is completely worth it because if you think about how much, oh, just passed him. There goes the cop. And look at the arrows. It's telling me, it's behind me. Thing totally works the arrows are pointing behind a lot of people are like well why would you get this is it legal you have to check with your own state but in my state it is legal to have it it doesn't block any of what the cops radar does but it does alert you from miles away when there is a highway patrolman or a police officer so the reason why i say that is not so that you can just go and break the law but the majority of people do drive faster than these established speed limit and when you get a speeding ticket, it will raise your insurance rates per month. And it will also, you have to pay like $150, $200, depending on what the speeding ticket is to the local police. And when you're on a road trip, you don't know where all the speed traps are. And there's some crazy speed traps that should not exist, that are not fair, where the speed goes from like 75 down to 55 for like two miles in a canyon. I definitely recommend spending the money getting a radar detector. All it takes is really one speeding ticket that you avoided to pay for the cost of having this radar detector. I typically drive a little faster than the speed limit. I usually go anywhere from five to 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. In my state, the speed limit is 80. The top speed of a Tesla in autopilot is 90. So I typically am on 90 often. In fact, here we go. I'm gonna push it up to 90. It sets on 90, even though there's a car in front of me, it'll slow down, it'll keep the pace, and I keep my hand on the wheel, I pay attention when I'm on autopilot, but definitely, definitely, I know this sounds like a simple one, and Lincoln kind of said it earlier, use autopilot when you're on road trips. Yes, I am still driving, it's not fully autonomous at this point, but I'm telling you, it gives you an additional level of safety and security knowing that there's 13 cameras around the vehicle that are assessing and evaluating everything that's going on around you and it'll make up for my weaknesses of maybe not seeing something. Find a way when you're an autopilot to keep your arm on the wheel in a way that's not even like you're like driving it but you put it on there so it gives it enough pressure so that you don't even have to think about keeping your hand on the wheel and then the notifications go away. Some people cheat the system and I do not recommend this. Some people will take like a bean bag and tape it to the side of this, just enough so that it'll give it enough weight and then they don't even have to touch it. That's incredibly dangerous. I know of people, good friends, that have fallen asleep in their Tesla while they've had like a weight on their steering wheel for like an hour and the car just drove down the freeway. That is scary. These cars are not made for that yet. So I put my elbow on the car here and then I just put my hand on here and I just relax it. The other way I do it is I have this right here. I pull this drink holder out and then I put my elbow on it and then I place my hand right here and just give it a little bit of weight. And now for an hour, it's not gonna tell me to take over unless there really is something super dangerous. All right, back to driving a little bit. We are chasing daylight. It might be dark by the time we get to the next supercharger. It definitely will be dark by the time I get to my hotel. A couple of things at each one of those that I wanna show you. Welcome to Nephi, Utah, home of a Tesla supercharger. Woo, it's cold. Okay, one essential thing that you need if you're going on a road trip is this little adapter right here. This is an adapter that comes with your Tesla, but this is the adapter that goes from any other type of car charger, pretty much most of them in America, that are not Tesla chargers, and it will make it so that you can charge and plug into your car because the end of it is different for Tesla than it is for most other electric cars. A lot of hotels and a lot of places, if you're in an emergency, or even like in Vegas at a lot of the hotels, they don't have the Tesla destination chargers. You need this little adapter. This little dumb thing right here could be the difference between your car dying and having to be towed or you getting energy at a certain place and be able to make it somewhere. The other tip that is essential, you have to get one of these little USB sticks and activate it. In my Model S, it's right there. 
in a lot of newer Teslas, the Model Y, Model 3, it's inside of the glove box, like right into here. Because then what it does is the security system is set up. So when you walk away from your car, sentry mode is on. If you choose, you have to push the button so that it knows you want sentry mode on. It'll record everything that happens around your car. But more importantly, that on a road trip, when you're driving, if something happens, like there's a car accident in front of you, or you're in a car accident, or something crazy happens, somebody sideswipes your car, you can have it set up to where you honk the horn and it saves all the footage from the last 10 minutes. So I can take a look right now and I can see the last 58 minutes of my drive. Everything is saved. And what's cool is that you can switch between cameras. There's the left, there's the right, there's the rear camera, there's the front camera. So I can see everything that's happening, even see the water going up, that's cool. Lincoln was at a golf tournament in this place called Smithfield, Utah, and I can pull it up and here it is. Get a big USB stick so that you can record a lot of stuff. I have sentry mode saving a lot of key moments, but on a road trip, if something happens where an accident happens, it's so helpful for you to have the footage that you need to show what happened, whether it's the insurance company or the police. That's one thing I love about Lincoln having the car. Hopefully it's something that protects him so that if something happens to him, we have the footage and it doesn't incriminate him if he did something dumb and now we have footage that shows it. That's enough charging for me. We are heading out of here and uh, we're gonna go to my hotel. I don't even have a hotel booked yet, but I'm going to give you my next tip that is a super important, interesting tip once I find this hotel, but I don't know which one it is yet. Hold on, driving. I have made it to my hotel. I'm still in the parking lot right now. I have not gone in. In fact, I don't even have a room reserved yet, but the parking lot is empty. It is like a Monday night. We're gonna get a room. I often say this to my friends that have gas cars. Can you imagine going to a hotel and saying to the person, while I sleep tonight, can you fill my tank up with gas, please? Just top it off. There's no way that a valet is gonna do that. And if they do, they're gonna charge you for it. Find a hotel that has a charger. You can plug in your car and by morning, it's going to be fully charged. And that saves you 20, 30, 40 minutes that you don't have to sit at a supercharger when you're on your map. I'm in uh, Salt Lake right now, I'm zooming out. And you touch this little button right here that has charger, see that? It's like a charger button. So you push that and it pulls up all of the different chargers on here. You can also change it based off of how fast they charge. So maybe you just want the slow chargers. Wow, that's a lot. The Grand America Hotel, downtown Salt Lake. I know that place is pricey. It's one of the nicest hotels in Salt Lake City. So. I don't want to pay three or four hundred dollars a night for my hotel. Well, this Holiday Inn Express is just off of the highway in Sandy. This is where I grew up. It's right off the freeway, super convenient, and it's a Holiday Inn. It's like a place that you just want to go in and go to sleep, get a free breakfast, and leave and check out the chargers they have. Is it still raining? It's not really raining. Holiday Inn Express. Here's the chargers they have. This one is a Tesla charger. There's no light on it. I think that one's broken. This one right here does have power. And this is the one that I'd need to put the Tesla adapter on here, but it would work in my car just like a Tesla charger. So if it only had those ones, I would be okay because I have this little adapter. So when I wake up in the morning, my car will be fully charged from the hotel. This is something the hotel here probably doesn't want to hear, but a lot of the different places that have hotels that are like this, the employees at the hotels, they're not going to take the time usually to go out and check to see, is this a hotel guest? Yes, you should probably go in and tell them, but one time there's an embassy suites right around the corner, like walking distance. It's a, it's a good walk. It's like a quarter of a mile right down the road, maybe not even that far. Leslie was traveling with the girls and they came up here and I wanted her to have embassy suites because it has two bedrooms. I had her come here and park and then they just walked to the embassy suites, stayed there for the night and then walked back over here. I know, super rebels, right? I've stayed at this hotel six times over the last two years and I would never have stayed at this Holiday Inn Express, but they have this charger here. I'm gonna get the car full overnight. It's gonna take seven hours. And when I wake up in the morning, I can head right out to Top Golf to see some of our awesome employees. Oh, you hit it! And have a good time. And then I can hit the road right after and drive all the way home. I need to grab my luggage and go inside. And since we're here, I might as well show you the hotel because uh, what does this Holiday Inn Express have in store? Let's check it out.
This hotel is actually nice enough, it has plenty of outlets, but I didn't know for sure, and so I just brought this up. Thank you to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video again. Check out in the description. But also, I'd like to hear your tips from some of you that are seasoned Tesla drivers like I am. What are some other tips that maybe I left out of this video? And I hope that you enjoyed my little road trip. It's just a little road trip. You literally kept me company, so thank you for keeping me company on this five hour drive up north. I do it way too often. That's why I have to have a long range car because I go on lots of road trips. I have 30,000 miles on my Tesla and it's been less than a year. And our other one, we have 80,000 miles. And we've had other ones that we've sold in the past, but that's a lot of miles. We do a lot of driving. Not everybody does road trips, but we do it all the time. So this is a really weird shot with the fish eye. Oh, look at that. It's like, this lens is so wide. Look how big my fingers look. If I go really far away and stick my hands forward, watch out because of how wide the lens is. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my head looks so small compared to my hands. That's what I do when I'm bored in my hotel. All right, good night. I'm going to sleep. Wow. Are you in honors math, Boston? No, I suck at math. It doesn't, apparently not. You're teaching Lincoln how to do yeah, math. Lincoln's teaching me how to golf and I'm teaching him how to do math. So right now, that guy's giving me weird looks. <laughs> He's really weird looks. He's like listening to his charger. That's funny. What is he doing? That guy's mad. He's like listening to my car too. Okay, there's some weird people here. The guy is totally staring at me. <laughs> Those kids are looking at me like, I know him. He makes YouTube videos. <laughs>